Frage. Welcome to Poker Stories Behind the Scenes, the podcast about poker and um, the stuff behind the tables and around the tables. We've got a very special guest today, Herbert, friend of mine who is creating this podcast together with me. And we have a special format today as well. We have 52 questions related about poker and lifestyle and other stuff. So be prepared for very interesting questions. And I'm excited about the answers. Uh, Welcome to the podcast, Harry. Hi, Vladimir. Uh, <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> I have to say that. Uh, and I'm really excited because uh, we did the, the other way around uh, a couple of days ago. And it, it was really fascin fascinating. And uh, today, I don't know what twists you made to the questions, uh, but uh, really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, let's start. Right. I... Uh had no idea about the questions and obviously Herbert knows the questions. So I might add some do that. to make do it that. more exciting. Yeah. Bring me in trouble. Uh, to make it, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, to make, make it more, more, uh, more interesting. Uh, so Herbert is more unprepared. But anyhow, we get started with the poker questions. And the first one is your favorite format, fixed limit, pot limit, or no limit? I have to say it's a pot limit uh, by far. Uh, I started out as many with a no limit. Uh, I never managed to, to learn fixed limit. And like in the mid of my career and basically all my time as a uh, as professional poker player, I played uh, pot limit Oma as my main game. Uh, I added some tournaments, hit and goes, but uh, uh, pot limit uh, must be. All right. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I know a couple of guys who started with fixed limit, and uh, I never really played fixed limit either. We we talked a little bit about it. How how I, I never even understood how to play fixed limit, and then a friend told me you just call. It's always call call because you're getting the pot the pot outs anyway. But moving on to the next question: cash games or tournaments? Uh, th that's a tough one for me. Um, I, I focused early in my career on uh, on tournaments a lot uh, and played them throughout my career, basically. And uh, I believe that was my strongest game, too, apart from being a pot limit Omaha cash game player, because uh, uh, Omaha tournaments, they just suck. Like, it's it's such a weird game um, playing Omaha in, in, in tournaments. Um, but I would say if I have to decide, it's uh, tournaments. All right. What's uh, so? What is the biggest skill in tournaments? What what what? Yeah. What do you need to have? Um, well, you you have to have a, a good knowledge about uh, like the the different stack sizes throughout the tournaments. The uh, identif identifying the spots when you can uh, apply pressure, staying away from the chip leaders, or if you are chip leader, like bullying the guys. But you have to um, but play around that, and then it's it's very mathematical in the end. It requires some patience, and there are a lot of elements because in cash game it's always the same, but in tournaments like the play in the early stages, the middle stages, in the late stages, it, it changes a lot, and there are many things to to consider. Uh, and uh, I always found that fascinating. Plus, like you can win, like the, the like have huge boost. Like if you if you win a tournament, and that feels just amazing. Like you pay fifty dollars and win ten thousand. Like that's amazing. Right, right. It also takes a lot of time. It takes a lot, a lot of, of time. time. Yes, yes. It's yeah. a hard grind. <laughs> So moving on to the next question about tournaments, sit and goes or MTTs? Uh, uh, MTTs, I played a lot of sit and goes uh, in all formats. Um, I like that quite a lot, but uh, MTT, MTT is my favorite game, I have to say. Uh, would, do you prefer MTTs because it's a? It seems like the it's a bigger yeah it's a, it's a bigger tournament. It 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 goes it lasts longer. It's Less variance is MTT. Less variance sit and go seems like you end the blinds are moving up more more quickly. You end up push or folding way more. Uh, sit and go is is m more static, so to say. Like it's yeah. very defined, and that's why I I lost a little bit the, the passion for sit and goes because it's so well, it's basically solved. 
uh, to an extent. And MTT, it's like like it's a different style of play because uh, in the early stages you have like almost no action because you you play very limited and selected hands uh, at the start, and it, it's a different type of grind. Sometimes I I had like eight or ten tournaments open, and you watch like a series on the side. And only focus when when it when it's needed. And in sitting goes, you you can't do that. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's actually uh, yeah. I never did that. Um, if I uh, that that's a great idea. Actually, we talked about if we're gonna come up to the question, what you wanna watch best, your favorite series. So now I'm thinking if I I can I can watch The Wire every <laughs> weekend. While playing the Sunday Million, that's actually great. Yeah, the tournament, the, the issue with tournaments is that if you are start as a cash game player, you kind of, you are used to, to getting it all in or push and stuff. And you just can't, and, and you, you can bluff off a stack and move on and rebuy. And like, let's say you're playing heads up against a guy who joined your table with a short stack. You can lose an all in or twice or three times you still win it all back but in tournaments you're you're just gone so it's a different different story but yeah if you if you can add like a tv series or a super bowl or stuff like that you are you are not as you are you you can play a low ball but i i just added a new question actually <laughs> while we talked about it so short stack or deep stack um I played a lot of short stack uh, strategy, uh, <laughs> not only in the beginning of my career, but I was uh, experimenting all the time, even in, in Pot Limit Omaha. I played um, a lot of short stack actually uh, and tried to well, find a good strategy there. So, and I never really enjoyed playing deep stack. That was too much, too much tension. Uh, obviously, you do it, but uh, short stack. I say short stack. Oh yeah, yeah, short stack. I actually, I hated short stacks so much, and even cap tables. You even had cap tables. I always avoided them. Um, and uh, in Pot Limit Omaha, very late in, in my career, people actually realized how much how, how good it is to be a short stack. You always realize your equity and stuff like that. But um, rake is an issue actually. But yeah, I agree with you. Deep stack. In No Limit, I always prefer deep stack because you can put pressure on your opponent. But in Pot Limit Omaha, deep stack is, oh, that's going to be so crazy. People people just call, call, call. You, you know, you can four bet and you still only get like 20% of your stack in preflop and then it gets tough postflop. So, um, all right. Yeah, so 100 big blinds for me probably as well. All right, next question is about head slim, uh, heads up. Six max or full rank? What do you prefer? Uh, I, I prefer full ring for tournaments. Uh, so to say, I, I had a very bad experiences in six max tournaments all the time. That was not, not my type of game. In cash games, uh, obviously it's six max. Uh, I played a lot of uh, online. And uh, especially for Pot Limit Omaha, um, six, max is, six max is the best format. Uh, I played heads up. Um, well, table selection, uh, and so on. Uh, I enjoy heads up a lot, but I, I didn't have that much of an edge uh, unless like you had a, a very uh, uh, a profitable opponent. Uh, so it's it's six max and uh, for, for tournaments, it's full ring. Yeah. All right. Now, do you prefer live poker or online poker? Online poker. That's very clear. Um, I played my fair share of, of live games, uh, even in the, the casino here in Barcelona. Um, but uh, uh, I'm an online player. I uh, yeah, I like online way more. Uh, uh, the, the flexibility, having more tables, uh, not waiting so so long until uh, you get a hand. Like you know that you play live. Like sometimes you're caught dead for two hours and just sit there, and uh, yeah, that's annoying a little bit. So online poker. Yeah. So how do you think the people who are playing live poker, how do they manage to still do it for such a long time? Do, do you think they have like special habits or do you, they prefer, are they taking breaks? Do, do they, they probably have a schedule for the week, right? Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I had that too. 
but like uh, I, it, it gets stale for me. Like I'm, I'm too impatient, and uh, like only playing live that that hurts. Sometimes it's great. I even played like you know the the high roller tournaments uh, here in Barcelona, which last like five days. Th that's okay. Like you have a specific goal, you know, like it's a high roller event. Uh, you have to play for five days or four days or whatever, or only one day <laughs> if things go bad. Uh, that's okay. But I couldn't do this like for for month. Like um, yeah. Online, online player. All right. And uh, what about the, like, did you have trouble with your, uh, with your body language in live tournaments? Like, if you are coming from online poker, you, you know, you can sit, you can smile, you can be angry, you, you can even fake chat or something like that, but you are really safe, actually. Uh, and, and if, uh, in my experience, when I was playing live poker, I, I, I think you are giving away um, a lot of information by just being human and you are not used to control it and it's tough to learn it probably. So what is your experience in that regard? Um, uh, that, that's funny, actually. I like I don't know if, if I was a good life player or not, but I, I noticed in general in my life, people tend to misunderstand my intentions or how I feel. So it's not, not that, that apparent. Sometimes I'm angry and they say, hey, you were so chilled and relaxed. And sometimes I'm, I'm really chilled and they say, hey, why, why are you angry? So I believe that, that helped a little bit, but that's not due well, to, to my skill or like my training. Obviously, I tried not to give away things. But then sometimes in life, like you have a huge pot or a huge hand going on and then your heart starts beating and that uh, like you almost can't breathe. Uh, th that's funny because that never happened online to me. Yeah, well, you get excited, nervous, uh, but the others can't see it. But in live poker, like the, the, the heartbeat like and, and, and like the emotions like are way more intense, which is uh, which is funny in itself because basically it's the same game. Uh, but uh, yeah. So All right. I believe I never gave away too much or maybe I, I don't know. Mm. I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting because also I just, uh, when, when reflecting about it, you also sometimes, I also sometimes double check my, my whole cards in Omaha, especially four cards. And there, there must be a tell as well. Like you can fake check or you shouldn't check the cards and stuff like that. Maybe it doesn't matter, but, People who are very experienced, I would say, they can gain a huge edge by just reading. Uh, like someone like Daniel Negriano must be really good in live games compared to online. He's gonna get. I mean, you could you could probably compare it to real life business. If if you have someone from from uh, who is hiring people, whenever he's making an interview, he just knows he notices if someone wants to work, if someone is really motivated, uh, because he's got so much experience. Uh, he, yeah, so uh, live poker uh, is, is a different beast. All right, so moving on to the next question is long or short sessions? Uh, best would be to play short sessions only. Uh, but uh... I always say this grinding mindset, I needed a little bit of time to get into the session. So I, I loved very much long sessions uh, and I played many like 24 hour plus sessions, uh, many, many. Um, and uh, I really like that that part of the game. But like if, if you want to be GTO in your approach and, and focus on mindset and, and really uh, top performance all the time, Uh, then it must be short sessions. Like you need to like, get used to it uh, to perform at a certain time and not uh, to grind it out. Uh, because um, I like the, the 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 longer formats because uh, I know for a fact that I can stay focused very long time. Uh, and then like at, at the end, I got my opponents. But it would be best just to play short sessions, focused uh, and um, yeah. But yeah, I'm a long session player. Yeah, um, it reminds me of, of of a quote that human human is not a, a long um, long distance runner. We are sprinters, and if you are taking a break, also standing up from the chair is just gonna doing some push ups. It's gonna move your brain uh, activity. 
and people online especially started doing it they just took a break every two hours just they said they're gonna go smoke something but they just took a break and got an edge over that so the next question i just added another one is what is your longest session you just said 24 hours but i i feel like there is there is a, a bit more room for for that maybe we get to 30 um, hours my longest session in poker yeah um... Because I, I had a gaming session when I was studying. It was Checked Alliance 2. And I played for more than three days. Uh, like, I wow. got in sort of a trance. And, like, uh, I wanted, like, I did a headshot and there was an explosion. I never saw that. And I said, okay, I want to do that again. Like, that was after eight hours of playing. And, and then, like, I don't know. I entered in a sort of trance and, like, the, the, the sun moved up, down, moved up, down, and I didn't eat, I didn't stand up, nothing. And that was, like, more than three days. Um, in poker specifically, um, I believe that was around 40 hour, uh, 40 hour ish, ar around that. Uh, online, online, online or online. live? Online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> online, online. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. All right. I never did that. I never did that. So it feels like, but there are, there are people who really played many, many, yeah, many hours. Right. Okay. Now, next question is made hand or a draw. What do you want? Uh, both actually in Potlimit Omaha, like top set and not flush draw. Mm -hmm. That's something you want all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. But okay. if, if you would have to decide, uh, like again, Potlin with Omar, it's, it's about draws. Uh, you want to have draws and uh, yeah, so draws, uh, clear draw. Yeah, it's the excitement when you have a draw. And, ah, that's just, yeah, you, like you said, your heart starts beating and you, you get you get to see that it actually, I have a friend who, who I started playing poker with and we watched Deuces Cracked videos back then with Krantz, and we still are talking about it, how when Krantz flopped the flush draw, how he, how he would go like flush draw, flush draw, flush draw. <laughs> you just want to get the money in. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, very exciting, actually. Um, next question is, what is your favorite starting hand? Um, well, I, I discard aces. Um... I always want to have aces, but I believe that's not the, the type of question. But uh, I prefer the, the low rundowns a lot, uh, like five, six, seven, eight. They, those feel just amazing when you win. But the, the issue is that like you learn that the hard way that they don't always win uh, <laughs> because yeah, you get in trouble. So I believe something nice like check 10, 9, 9, 8, check 10, 9, 7. Um, or even like uh, ace type of rundown hands. Uh, I'm just talking about uh, pillow hands because uh, that's what I played the most uh, in the end. So yeah, it, it's rundown type of hands. And in hold'em, um, I like kings a lot. Uh, a funny reason I had like I believe I played half a year and looked at the stats, and I won more money with kings than with aces, which is like uh, absurd a little bit. Uh, but that's how it is. That's why I like I like kings a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just uh, actually remember that queens. We, like late in my career, I was playing with a friend on party poker, and queens would always flop a set. <laughs> it was so crazy. We just loved them. Uh, but yeah, I remember looking at my stats back then at poker poker tracker. The first version, which hands won the most money, was clear. Aces, kings, queens, ace, king. And it was basically for everyone like that. But the human brain just remembers when it's losing with aces. and Or if you win just pre-flop and it gets folded around to you and you win nothing. That's just so, so sick. Uh, and you, you, get, you get really mad at that. But um, yeah, all right. Moving on to the next question is, what is your most famous opponent you played against? Um, I never really was a high stakes player, uh, so the most famous opponent was Neymar Junior, like the football player. Uh, he he used to play on on the Spanish poker stars. Uh, that's why I know that, that was really him because he had like this, uh, as he called like uh, ambassador badge or whatever. Like, yeah. and uh, I played uh, many hands with him actually um, in mid stakes, Potlimit Omaha, and. 
the funny thing is he, he was a little bit too lag too too much lag but he was a good player actually he he played creative uh, had really nice lines and overall played solid uh, but obviously like with with his bankroll he didn't care too much so he he gambled a little bit too uh, but uh, if he wouldn't gamble he would actually be a very good player i believe yeah i i think that people like neymar and you have other like uh, i think uh, dicaprio plays a lot and the the toby mcguire must be huge winner from from the stories but what i'm saying is that people like neymar who are really good at something if they do something else they also want to be really good and um it's uh people always times are thinking that that maybe celebrities are poor at poker but i wouldn't say so because they, they are motivated they want to be good obviously they cannot beat you because they are not practicing as often as you do but they are not totally really really like bad players um okay now we are moving to the section of live and the first question is are you a morning person or a night owl um i'm actually both um i like to get up very early in the morning uh and i like to stay up late but uh, if i would have to decide uh, and do only one thing it's uh, getting up early like I, I really like it uh, getting up early when everything is quiet uh, and, and start your day like uh, how you, how you want uh, so uh, morning person all right another question is what is your morning routine look like um well uh, that uh, the morning routine changes quite a lot if you have children um so uh, that's why like Let's keep the family stuff out of there because you know how it goes. Like you get up, like prepare yeah. your kids. But before, like when I was studying, my morning routine, like I, I would get up at even five, five, five thirty in the morning. And then I I studied ancient Greek uh, for for an hour, an hour and a half. Then I went to university when the library opened uh, at eight, and uh, was there one hour, uh, just like grabbing the stuff I wanted to do and and then like my day started after that like um, and I, I really had this fixed routine and I, I really loved it uh, because I'm I'm far more productive and and creative in the morning so uh, it, it helped a lot and then getting the stuff out of the way you want to have finished as early as possible in the day and then like everything is an add-on so to say because you already did things you you really wanted to um, that that's a great way um um to get into the day uh yeah and then you're relaxed yeah. and uh, you're far more productive uh, overall yeah that's actually for, for how many years were you doing that um basically three three years four years uh i was stuck to the routine yeah. uh Maybe another funny poker routine. Uh, when I worked in Gibraltar for Poker Strategy uh, and, and I played poker too, like I would get up really early and play a session of poker uh, before I went to the office uh, early as well. So uh, I would get up at five uh, in the morning, like play a two or three hour session uh, and then go to the office. Uh, and sometimes, like, uh, I was happy and sometimes I was really, really tilted. And my colleagues uh, uh, could tell after quite a while, they say, hey, don't, don't yeah. ask Herbert anything today. Like, uh, did you see how, <laughs> how he got in the office? Uh, yeah. yeah, I know a guy. I know a guy who told me that, that he would come in and he was like, all right, he lost a few binds today. For sure, for sure. All right, moving on to the next question. So what do you prefer? Is it a coffee or a tea? In the morning, obviously. Uh, in the morning, uh, I'm now clearly a coffee person. I had periods where I was tea only, basically. Uh, uh, but uh, the, the past five, six years, I'm, I'm really into coffee. Uh, I try to experiment a little bit. Uh, like I have some hipster methods to prepare uh, coffee, like with like weird filters and stuff and like temperature control and, and all that and buying fancy coffees too. So a uh, coffee, uh, clearly coffee now. All right. Um, one more question, Ag, which I think is going to be interesting, especially given your background. What's your favorite wine? So region, 
red wine, white wine. And yeah, just, just tell us about it and tell the story behind it. Why I'm actually asking this. Question. Okay. You're, you're asking because, uh, when I finished my studies and my PhD, I looked for a job and I've, I worked as a wine expert, uh, in, um, in a small, uh, German company, which was a whole, whole shipping company, basically. Um, so I worked there more than two years. Uh, and did quite some uh, training and formation in wine and so on. So it, it's a very tough question. But uh, like the, the, the best wine I, I ever tried was um, there's a fair called Vinitali, uh, which is in, in Verona uh, every year, a really great fair. Uh, and there, um, working in the industry, I, I got invited to, to a lot of tastings. Every evening there was a tasting. And there's a famous um, a, uh, well a company in in Veneto, um, um, which is called Maculan, and they were the first to copy the Bordeaux style of wine, uh, and they did it like with the with the Italian grapes, uh, and they produced like. Bordeaux style wines, like everything was Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, they, they did the aging in the barrique. And the owner of, of this um, of this company, he was a, a total, total freak in all senses. And he, it is said that his collection of Bordeaux wines is the, the biggest in the world. Uh, so imagine this. So we were invited, it was about a thousand people there, like... Uh, a lot of like industry, everything, everyone tied up. And then like this guy, he, like he, he had like uh, holes in his trousers. He was, was was dirty, like a really weird guy. And then he went in the cellar and came up with 10 bottles of like the finest uh, Bordeaux wines, like really expensive uh, Chateau Lafitte, uh, all the big names from the 30s. I don't know the worth of, of wow. the, the bottles. Wow. Uh, and I tasted... Um, uh, Chateau Lafitte and what was the other one? I don't recall. Uh, from 1935, don't know the the value, and that was was insane. Like that, like the the taste uh, and the experience because you never get like to taste like these fifty thousand upwards uh, uh, yeah. bottles. Um, so yeah, uh, so those were were the were the, the best wines I, I tried ever. Uh, and there were many good wines I tried uh, during my my short short career there. So sometimes I miss that. Uh, I miss that yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's it's great to be in a business where you are not just getting paid the money like your your paycheck, but you also get the benefits. If you are working in the, in the wine industry and you love wine. You obviously get to taste a lot of yeah. great stuff <laughs> during your work time. Uh, Not during is, work time, but, but in the evening. Oh, Actually, okay. that's quite funny. So I was working a, a, as a wine expert and we, we got sent like samples from a lot of, of wine sellers. And I basically for two years, I tasted, I tasted, not drank, uh, two to three bottles of wine uh, each evening. So... I, I, but yeah, yeah, obviously, they send you the samples you have to try. It's not drinking, guys. It's, it's not, not drinking. drinking. It's, uh, it's there, tasting. like, okay. you, you learn, like, the value because before you were like, yeah, you never, you never pour away, like, wine. And then, like, you get used to it. Like, you, you try it. If it's shit, like, you mm. just pour it immediately. Yeah. If it's a nice bottle, like, you keep it. But uh, usually, like, you, you don't drink all of it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, what, you, you, um, yeah, I I think we know what you're talking about, and it's uh, I I I I noticed quite often that when I'm eating, I drink wine way too quickly. I'm I actually enjoy it more before the dinner because they're much more slower, or in the evening because when I'm eating the wine. Um, it's oftentimes like if you are coming from from uh, from beer and stuff like that, you are you're just drink too much of it, and you should be drinking way slower, I guess. And you gotta learn that. All right. Next question is: What do you enjoy doing in your free time? Um, that that differs uh, quite some time. Um, I just like half a year ago, I I was hardcore grinding Path of Exile a lot. Uh, 
but that's just too time consume, consuming. And now uh, I'm relaxing simply. Like uh, when my kids are in bed, I I play rapid chess, um, one one match a night. I listen to music, and that really helps me. Well, focus on something specific, and and it calms me down because your mind is sometimes like yeah you you have so many ideas so so much stuff happened and then you play chess you focus on on your move on your next move um listen to some nice music and that's uh, how i relax uh, now without wine uh, usually uh <laughs> nowadays all right uh, any hobbies or activities you are really passionate about um passions change um uh, now, like my biggest hobby is uh, are the football matches of my of my uh, older son. Uh, the smaller one started too, but he's like uh, just started off, and I really enjoy this because they play this this league. It's Primera División in Barcelona, um, and what I really love about it, apart from watching my son like scoring goals, sometimes making uh, good matches, is like you, you go to places you would never go otherwise. Like you, you go to whatever, like. Uh, uh, quarters you would never visit usually yeah. you you get inside of like schools or training grounds and see like you learn to know the city in a, in a different way like not like a tu tourist but uh, uh, yeah like someone who, who lives here and you see like a lot of like weird stuff you understand a lot of differences between like quarters uh, and, and that's really um, uh, really um, interesting to to see and and to learn like the, these new places and these microcultures around football football stadiums football clubs traditions uh and so on so um that's my biggest hobby at the moment all right all right sounds really really interesting especially so it's all within barcelona right within the city uh it's not only in the city so you go uh outside sometimes to Sabadei, which is 30 kilometers outside ruby sometimes you go to prat where the airport is which is like a different city you go to hospitalet a lot uh, to badalona a lot which are like the the huge two cities around uh, barcelona who form the metropol metropolitan area uh so yeah uh, it's not just barcelona like uh it's uh, like the the outskirts too all right great um what is your favorite tv show or movie of all time there are there are many candidates but as i have to decide uh, and say one only one name i will go with G game of thrones which was uh really impactful for me like i really enjoyed watching this like uh, that uh, i never saw a series where Basically, all the main actor, main characters die <laughs> just randomly, and you always get new stuff. So, and it took me quite a lot. So, I read all the books uh, from George R. Martin too, which like uh, they 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 are uh, big, but I really enjoyed it. And I read it in English, which was challenging too. Uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I really like the that that cosmos and um, that uh, will be my series, Game of Thrones. Right. And I, I keep on recommending and telling Herbert the wire is the way to go because then the Game of Thrones seems, I mean, it's, it's also pretty good, but you probably, you can still compare it. You can't compare it as much, but the wire is just still, it's just, uh, the wire is like really high stakes. It's so the games don't run anymore as good as the wire. Okay, that's, guys, that's you can like... find the the affiliate link uh, from <laughs> right here yeah, to the yeah, wire yeah. in the description yeah, yeah, section yeah, below. Yeah. Like it's, I I think the wire is not even paying <laughs> any any money because it's so good. All right, yeah, yeah, you guys gotta watch it. Don't miss it. So, what's the most interesting place you have traveled to, and where would you want to go, or why did you go there in the first place? Um, I believe the most interesting place I was to was, uh, was uh, Armenia. Uh, I visited a lot of like not the typical tourist locations, uh, but uh, Armenia impressed me the most because of uh, of the mindset of the people. Because um, it's not that far away from Europe, or basically, but it's considered even uh, almost Europe. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's a very poor country uh, with a lot of like 
like not not in Yerevan, like the, the capitals, you know, usually like you know, that's really representative architecture all the time. But you go a little bit outside, and uh, it's it's really poor. And like even like the, the biggest cities are like uh, are really small, and there you get in touch a lot with uh, with like regular and normal people and that that was very interesting because uh, i admire them They're, they were really poor but they were straight honest uh and uh, really helpful uh, welcoming uh, all the time um and uh, i really really appreciated that so yeah it yeah. would be armenia for me yeah i think there are many many countries in the world which are underrated for and and you kind of uh, why did you go there actually what what is what is the reason like did you did you look up on 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 expedia and, <laughs> and booked like a holiday yeah because it doesn't happen this yeah. way that's the interesting part you you get it's it, it's happening by by random list almost like um well it it was sort of planned like uh we like i like visiting countries that are not like I, I was so many times to Italy. My my wife is Italian. Uh, I, I live in Spain. Uh, I I was everywhere in, in Germany and so on. So uh, I visited France uh, many times, um, and I like to visit places where I don't have a clear idea what what awaits me. Like even if I I would go whatever to to Russia or Japan or uh, South America, I would know what we expect more or less. They are they are always nice experiences, but. Uh, if you travel, like th that travel in particular, we went um, to Armenia first and then to Georgia. And I didn't quite know what to expect. And that's what fascinates me about traveling, like learning something I, I couldn't anticipate. Because, yeah, if I go to Japan, like I, I visit Tokyo, I go to Kyoto, I, I look at the shrines, I know some stuff about the culture. But uh, if if I would ask you, like, Armenia, do you know anything about it? Like, how is life there? How... Uh, what language do they speak? Like, I, I didn't know beforehand, and that's that's what excites me about uh, like when I travel to learn something I I have no idea about like and and to experience like the life there. That's uh, my yeah favorite. yeah I I agree that's really really interesting especially um, especially if you compare it to something that that you know what it is and it's always the same it's just so boring and here is why we play poker you get four cards in omaha you never know what's <laughs> what it's gonna be and then you you're taking you you can't wait for the flop like especially four way and you have got to run down and you're like come on bring it bring it like yeah, yeah it's just so so exciting um okay now moving on to the next question which is about pets any pets you have any pets you want to have um, I don't have pets at the moment. Uh, I don't want to have any because we live in an apartment. No, no, that, that's a natural reason. Uh, my my sons would love to have a dog, um, but uh, I consider it like we we have an apartment and it, it's just too small. And um, yeah, so no pets at the moment. Maybe if I would move in the house with a huge garden, uh, I would like to have a dogs and cats I actually when i was younger for many years i had three cats um i enjoyed that a lot but now is not the right moment because yeah you have pets like you can't travel um uh, so yeah no pets yeah i was gonna say cat but i mean you can travel the cat is you you just leave it in the apartment for a couple of weeks i mean with a cat it, it works easier and with a small dog it it can work out but i would even say in barcelona it's so hot outside a lot of the time for dogs it's it's tough i had a labrador like i like i said and uh, yeah you need more time or the children need to care to take care of themselves okay next question is about what your favorite ways to relax after a stressful day um after a stressful day i i like to play uh, a match of chess rapid chess uh, and uh, listen to music, and that really calms me down and grounds me, and prepares me for for the night. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a. I, I used to play chess as well. I might might do it myself. I think that there's a lot of value in it. You 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 sleep way better. Would you say that? 
No, no, I always sleep well, usually. Uh, I never had issues. Uh, like, I'm, I'm the type of guy I lay down and then uh, I'm asleep uh, already, <laughs> which uh, yeah, tilts many yeah. people who have troubles, like, finding yeah. uh, finding uh, the sleep and uh, turn around. So uh, I'm the guy, like, I lie down and then I sleep. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Now, your favorite type of food. Uh, like from the category that's definitely meat um, and nowadays like when I was younger it was always a, a Wiener Schnitzel uh, uh, which uh, I still like a lot but now it shifted towards like uh, more like uh, steaks um, and uh, more quality meat I would say so um, I actually ate a very nice steak a tomahawk steak uh in in croatia and that that was amazing that's my well my favorite food uh i have to say like that was uh, outstanding the quality of the meat like how it was seasoned how it was grilled uh amazing amazing uh, tomahawk steak <laughs> all right it's a big one uh next question is about your goals for the future um that's a very difficult question to answer for me because on one hand like i have a couple of goals um professional ones uh, as well as private ones but uh i learned to not like focus um entirely on on having the goals but to start more from from the here and now um so it's a more zen approach uh, and take step by step and and um I made bad experiences like having a goal and attaching my identity to that goal because that made me unhappy in a way. So now I have sort of like several objectives they are out there, but I, I tend to to take it step by step from the here and now uh, and and move forward more steadily and, and slowly instead of uh, like having this this only goal and focus on the only goal because uh, uh, that's uh, that's not worth it because there are so many things in life that that can change that can happen uh, that having like a really strict goal uh, and um, attaching your your happiness to achieving that goal that that just doesn't work for me uh, yeah all right fair enough 